Danielle Marshall was such a talented basketball player. He was a legend in college and wound up having a very solid 15-year NBA career. But what always baffled me was what happened early in his career. And for this video, I want to go over Marshall's first three years in the NBA and try to explain what happened. But before I talk about Yale's first few years in the NBA, I have to go back to his college years. So Marshall, he played at the University of Connecticut as UConn has had such a great tradition under Jim Calhoun of producing shooting guards and small forwards and it all really started with Daniel Marshall and then was followed with greats like Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, Karan Butler, Ben Gordon and Rudy Gay and for the heck of it I'll throw in Jeremy Lamb. But anyways, the Reading, Pennsylvania native was awesome at UConn. Daniel Marshall was unanimous Big East Player of the Year in 1994 and was also the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. During his final year at UConn, which was his junior season, Marshall averaged 25.1 points per game and it seemed to be an easy 25 points per game. At 6'9", Marshall, he was a matchup nightmare in college. He could shoot from the outside, shoot off the dribble, could be a slasher, come off screens like all UConn guards and small forwards did, had a nice hesitation move and was really good at getting position down low and easily shot over smaller defenders in college. Furthermore, Marshall, he was great at running the floor and was also one of those players who was tall and looked a little uncoordinated, but that's because he had such a large wingspan, which helped him get several tip-ins on the offensive glass. Marshall also left UConn being the all-time leader in blocks. So the point is, Marshall, he was such a monster at UConn, one of the best Big East players ever, as he was outstanding during his junior year. So Daniel Marshall at 6'9", was immensely talented offensively and very versatile. His game seemed like it was going to fit so well and translate to the NBA. Now NBA mock drafts, they weren't really a thing back then, but I tried to check to see if Daniel Marshall was number one on anyone's 1994 mock NBA draft list, as it wasn't able to find any, but the point is, it wouldn't surprise me if someone had Marshall go number one overall to Milwaukee for the 1994 NBA draft. Instead, Daniel Marshall, he went to Minnesota fourth overall, so let me skip ahead a bit, as I thought Daniel Marshall he could be a 20 points per game scorer in the NBA, now that didn't quite happen, however, he had a really solid NBA career because of his offensive skills at 6'9", and he also had that long wingspan, as I enjoyed seeing Daniel play in the NBA, but early on in his NBA career, it was strange from my point of view. So to begin, Daniel Marshall, he began his career playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and for some reason, I honestly don't remember any highlights or anything from his time in Minnesota as it was like a blur or something. Then one day, I somehow missed this transaction. I was either watching a Golden State Warriors game or highlights or something like that and then I saw Daniel Marshall on the bench in Warriors apparel. And then I remember thinking something like, damn, the Timberwolves already gave up on Daniel Marshall and thought he was a bust so quickly. And that was in my mind for a long time. So here are Daniel Marshall's stats for his first three seasons in the NBA. And to be honest, at the time, I had no idea Marshall averaged that many points during his rookie season. I thought it was a lot less. But as you see, for his second and third seasons, Marshall's minutes and points, they decreased greatly. And for me at this time, it seemed like Daniel Marshall, one of the most talented 6'9 offense players I ever saw, it just seemed like he disappeared. So what happened? Now one thing I thought, Perhaps maybe I overestimated his game because he made it look so easy in college as there weren't too many guys who could match up with Daniel in college. But also around this time, the NBA was starting to have 6'10 guys like Derek McKee, Robert Ory, Detlef Shrimp, and former UConn great Cliff Robinson play this small forward position and guard on the perimeter. As mentioned earlier, in college, there weren't too many 6'9, 6'10 versatile athletic players, but in the NBA, those type of players were beginning to really appear. Perhaps I thought that maybe that was why it was such a tough adjustment period for Daniel Marshall early in his career. Now that could be the case, but then I saw some interesting items. So the first thing that I want to mention is that Daniel Marshall, he had the reputation of being a loafer, not having passion, which I had no idea about at the time. In a Sports Illustrated article written by Phil Taylor, numerous items are online about what happened in Minnesota with Daniel Marshall. For instance, Timberwolves forward Doug West was quoted as saying, he, meaning Daniel Marshall, didn't seem to want to work to get better. 
seemed to just want to come in and start putting the ball up. Furthermore, the article also mentioned that teammates, media, and fans questions Marshall's intelligence, courage, and work habits. As one columnist wrote describing Marshall, thick as a brick and a real wuss. And one last thing I want to mention in this article is that Taylor, he wrote that Timberwolf coach Bill Blair used him only sporadically because of his defensive deficiencies despite having the talent and attributes to be able to defend. So to exemplify this even further, what Wolves coach Bill Blair thought of Marshall's defense, in an article from Britt Robson of the Min Post, Bill Blair, he was getting ready to Xerox his notes to his coaching staff. The scanner was moving back and forth methodically, which led to Blair saying Danielle would have trouble guarding this copy machine. So Danielle, he was traded 40 games into his rookie season for Tom Gugliotta to the Golden State Warriors. His offensive numbers were better with more minutes, more shot attempts. So for the 94-95 season, Don Nelson, who's fired after 45 games, and the interim coaches Bob Lanier. But then for the 1995-1996 season, Rick Adelman, he'd be the new coach, as Daniel Marshall's minutes and points, they really declined. So a couple of things here. It was not a good two seasons with Adelman and Marshall. To simply put it, from an SF Gate article by Brad Weinstein, Marshall clashed with the coaching staff from the start and forged a permanent spot in Coach Rick Edelman's doghouse. Marshall checked into training camp before his second season out of shape, and Edelman made certain he was out of sight. The major incident that transpired was when Marshall was suspended for a game due to having a heated verbal altercation with a couple of Warriors coaches that included Marshall cursing at head coach Rick Edelman, which was very unusual coming from the laid-back Daniel Marshall. So after the 96-97 NBA season, Rick Edelman, he was fired in would be P.J. Carlissimo. And for the 97-98 season, Marshall, he got a chance to play with Carlissimo leading the way as Marshall began the season as a starter. Now, this was a season where it was hectic to be in the Warriors because of the Latrell Sprewell choking incident with P.J. Carlissimo. But nonetheless, Marshall, he got a chance to play. And there, this is where it seemed that Daniel Marshall, he found his niche in the NBA as he had the skills. As from this point on, Marshall became a decent scorer. Not the top option on a team, but for a 6'9 guy who could shoot from the outside and find other ways to score points, this is where Marshall began to have a really decent NBA career. With Marshall's first season with P.J. Carlissimo, Marshall, he finished third in the most improved player voting. And then one last thing I just want to say is that early on in Daniel Marshall's college career at UConn, Marshall questioned if he was good enough to play, but his coach at college, Jim Calhoun, saw the talent and understood he needed to be patient, as that was similar to what happened in the NBA as it took time and patience as Daniel Marshall became a really solid player during his 15 years in the NBA. So the point of this video is that I thought so highly of Daniel Marshall at UConn. His game was so impressive at 6'9", and perhaps he's arguably the greatest player in Connecticut Huskies basketball history. And notice I said arguably because I'm sure there's others people would put ahead of Daniel Marshall. But Marshall, he was so great at college. And then when he got to the NBA, he just seemed to disappear. But then he found his niche in the NBA and went on to have a long career and prove he could be a solid option to score in the NBA with his skills at 6'9". But for those first three years of Daniel Marshall's career in the NBA, they were just baffling to me as I wanted to see what happened because Daniel had some serious game and was awesome. So what are your thoughts about Daniel Marshall? What did you think about his first three years in the NBA? But anyways, I just want to say thank you for your interest in this video and thank you for all the support.